So I have done previously advanced Apple mapping videos, but I'm going to go a bit in depth and explain how to do advanced Apple mapping from a stage design and how to use custom compositions to achieve a better stage map that takes into account custom composition sizes and working with complex stage designs and LED screens. So here, this is a very basic stage design, something that's quite common, it's probably a million stages that already look like this, uh, with a DJ banner, a main screen at the back, a main square screen, and four column strips running vertically either side of the stage. Um, so this one, for the lead supplier, they've decided to send it on a 4K send, so a 3840, 3840 by 21600 size canvas, or uh, 4K HDMI send. So that's what we're working with. And typically for an LED processor, all of those screens, all the pixels in those screens would be starting from the top left corner, so 0, 0, and working their way down from there. And so that's why we use advanced ma mapping for output, because it's not a pretty way of organizing content, but it's the easiest way for them to map a, a video screen or an LED screen. And so hopefully we'd get something from the LED supplier that shows us exactly where those panels line up, or at least the pixel the pixel dimensions of those, or the pixel counts for each of those panels. So to work with that, we'll start with a 4K composition so we can fit it in, and we'll build the output map first. So we'll build what we're starting with. So I've got a 4, 4K composition here, 3840 by 2600, uh, 2160. Um, I'll turn on the test card just so I can see there's something on the screen. And we'll go into the advanced output. So straight I've got my default screen and it's at the same resolution. So we're only sending the a 4K resolution here. And we've got one full screen slice. So we'll start in the output map. If we're lucky enough to have received a mapping file or a raster from the supplier, if we click on the screen, we can load it straight in here. So I've got my data here, and I'll load that straight in. I can turn the uh, the opacity of that up. I'll turn it up all the way for now, and I'll just kill that test pattern for the moment. It's just working on the back. So here are our four columns, our main screen, and our DJ. And I've actually got the pixel counts in here. So I can draw them straight in. So that first slice will land that column one. And we know that it is 26 pixels wide. So I'm with 20, sorry, 276 by 1288. And it starts at zero, zero. So that's the pixel, the positioning here. So zero, zero. So from the left, zero pixels. And from the top, zero pixels. And now if I zoom out of that, that's column one. I know these four are the same, so I can copy and paste those. So column two, we'll snap right next to it. Column three, we'll snap right next to that one. Column four, we'll snap right there as well. Fix up three. However, I'll turn those off for now. And maybe these weren't, so maybe you just got the dimensions and you don't actually know where they line up. Well, they've actually left a gap, so I'll show you that as well. So let's just delete four for now and we'll make four floating by itself. So I'll create a new slice. It's a full screen slice at the moment and I want the dimensions from four. So I know it's 276 wide by 1288 high. And then using these dimensions, the pixel positioning here, that's the top left corner. So I had 828 from the left left 828 eight, and from the top 0 from the top 0 and as you can see that's in the correct position I'll rename that one to column 4 and just tidy up that area around there so you do the same thing for these two create a new slice for the DJ and a new slice for the main so this one's DJ and main. If I zoom in, I can see those. Have, I'll zoom in to get those values. So the DJ is 11, sorry, 1472 pixels wide by 
276 pixels high. And it starts from the left at 1104. So left, 1104, and from the top, zero. And now for the main screen, we zoom in to get those values. It is 920 by 920. And it starts at 1104 from the left. But this time it starts at 276, so it sits under the DJ banner. So from the top, 276. Okay, and now if I click back on the screen, I can fade that out and I can see that those boxes are there. So I don't need this map anymore. I can leave it there if I need to come back and check. If I go in and turn back on the test card, you can see right now, because the input for those slices is the full screen. So it's taking that test card and just copying it and stretching it to all those slices. So this is my 4K output and from my input. If I select all those slices, I'll go match output shape and that'll create them all. So now we're matching exactly the output. So we're sending the output from that corner. That's not quite what we want now. Now we're going to use the input map to make it prettier. So now what I'm going to start to do is we're going to build a new canvas size for Reslim. So we're going to figure out what, what we can actually make the composition size that does need to calculate all these extra pixels. So I create a new slice. I'll name that canvas. You don't need to, because we will delete it later. And I'm going to check the height of the stage, or the height of the panels on the stage, and which one's the tallest. And as I can see on the stage, the tallest LED screens are the, are the columns. And so we should need a canvas size any taller than those. So looking at Resolume, I can snap this slice to the exact same height as the columns, which was 1288. I'll now center that just so I'm working from the center. And I'm, I can move those columns. So I've got one column on the outside, and I've got another column on the outside. Column 2 is next to that one, and column 3 is next to that one. I know the DJ looking at the stage again, the DJ banner strip is at the same starting floor level as the columns, so I'll move that all the way into the bottom, and it'll be in the center of the stage as well. And the main is floating just about that, above that, and it's starting at about the same height as the columns on the stage as well. We've still got a lot of dead space here. So we can move these columns in. We don't need, I like to have a, I do like having a gap between the screens. You don't have to. You could snap everything close together and make it as compressed as possible. However, I like having a bit of a gap because it, I think it makes the content look nicer. Running across the whole screen. So I'll move them all together. And I want to have a gap between this. I know the panel counts, these are three panels wide. So 276 divided by 3 is 92. So I'll just move this over to the left, plus 92. This is just a made up number I'm using because I want about a panel space in between everything. So I'll snap this one back and I want it to be over again, plus 92. And same on this side, but this time we're going minus. So from the left, minus 92 pixels. Snap this one over and minus 92. And so now I've got a nice, much smaller canvas. I'll shrink this down to snap in there as well. And there we go. I'm now working with 1288 by 2944. Now that's a much nicer canvas size. So 1288 by 2944. I'll save that and I'll change my composition size now. So in settings, composition, 1288 by 2944. And once I apply that, oops, if I apply that in the correct aspect, 1288. There's a composition. If I go back to the output map, I'll need to fix this up again because everything's shrunk. But I should be able to grab that whole section, so all of those, and they should fit perfectly now into my new composition. If I turn on the test card, I can see it lines up now with that. And on the output, if I turn off the canvas, I can it's grabbing all those sections nicely. So if you look at the 
all those squares, they don't look like they're being stretched. So now we have a nice output map and input map with a custom composition size rather than using a default screen size. Now we jump to Resolume. I'll get some files in here quickly. It's a nice circle. Now scale us to fit the space. I this is now outputting nicely, but I can use now some use slices to transform where I want that to send. If I send that to the whole screen, turn off the canvas. We'll see it's now mapping to all the screens individually quite nicely using the fill fill selection. And we could turn these off easily to send things to different screens. So we just send to all the columns. Just to the DJ, just to the main. If we scale this to take out the full space now. And send it, we can actually mask it in here as well. So we're sending it across all the spaces. We can see the gaps in there now. So that's how you create an input and output map based on your stage with a custom composition size and an LED map from your supplier.